And our health lead, Dr. Sanjay Gupta, on call, a regular feature where you get your medical questions get answered. Um, this week's topic is weight loss drugs, as we touched on yesterday with Sanjay. A new study shows <clears throat> that some weight loss medications are more effective than others. We asked you to submit your questions, and we're going to answer a few of them. Well, I'm not going to. Here's CNN's chief medical correspondent, Dr. Sanjay Gupta. He's going to answer some of them. Sanjay, first question comes from Ma best. Mark in uh, Fancy Gap, Virginia. What a great... What a great name of a town, Fancy Gap. <laughs> anyway, uh, Mark writes, quote, weight loss drugs sound appealing, but I've read that they can come with significant muscle mass loss as you lose weight, unquote. This is something a, a lot of people asked us about, uh, Sanjay. What, what do we know about yeah. uh, losing muscle mass while on these drugs? Well, Fancy Gap, Mark, is, is correct uh, on this. I mean, the, the way to really think about it is that fundamentally these medications are working by making you eat less. So no matter what, when you lose weight like this and you're, because you're eating less, you're going to lose a certain amount of muscle mass in addition to fat mass. In fact, I'll show you this graphic, and this may surprise people depending on what you expect, but about 61% of the weight that you lose, whether it's these medications or simply restricting your calories, is going to come from fat, and about 39% from, from lean body mass, muscle mass. So just keep that in the back of the mind. I think there's two messages here. When you take these medications, you gotta anticipate what you're seeing on the screen, which means you, you gotta do resistance training, maybe as much, even more so than aerobic training, and also really think about your protein intake. You should be getting about one gram per kilogram of, of uh, protein every day. So if you weigh 200 pounds, that means you should be getting about 100 grams of protein every day. You gotta pay more attention to that when you're on these meds. A lot of uh, our viewers had the same question as this individual from Canada. Uh, is there sufficient long-term evidence that these drugs are safe for weight loss? Are there no long-term risks? What do we know, Sanjay? Well, here's what I would tell you, is that obviously you always want more data on things. But as much as we've come to learn about these drugs over the last couple of years, they've actually been around since 2005. So we're starting to approach 20 years worth of data. Uh, more and more people take them, more than ever, obviously now compared to then, but we do have an idea of the long-term risks. And in general, they do appear to be safe if taken for the right reasons. The, the, the concerns we hear about are usually more short-term. These drugs slow down how much your gut empties or how quickly your gut empties. So people do develop nausea, they do develop uh, vomiting. Um, uh, you know, si situations that are related specifically to that constipation. More rare side effects can occur as well, where people will actually develop stomach paralysis and obstructions. But thankfully, those are rare and they're getting more and more data. One thing to keep in mind, when you talk about side effects, it's either big side effects in a small a number of people, which makes it significant, or sm smaller side effects in a large group of people. And that's why they're paying attention now to even rare side effects, given that millions and millions of people are taking these. And finally, uh, Angela in Delray Beach, Florida, brings up this issue of the compounded version of these drugs and asks, mm. what are the risks of taking compounded drugs, considering they are mostly coming from a handful of reputable and known compounding pharmacies? It's an interesting question. Sanjay, first explain to folks what a compounding pharmacy is. So yeah, this is a pharmacy that basically can make versions of these medications when they're in shortage. So that's a really important policy point. When you have drugs that go into shortage, compounding pharmacies can help fill the, short, the shortfall of those, those drugs. Uh, oftentimes these are FDA approved uh, wholesalers that are providing the active ingredients to the compounding pharmacy. And then they compound it, they make the drug in these pharmacies. And, and uh, now they're not required to disclose safety and efficacy data. So we don't know really how effective or safe they are as compared to the, the brand name prescription drugs. But as this, this uh, questioner asks, uh, there are some very reputable compounding pharmacies. What is interesting, Jake, I'll show you something. The, the things that go into shortage when it comes to these drugs are not necessarily the drug itself. What's going into shortage typically are these pens. I don't know if you've seen these pens, Jake, but this is the Ozempic pen that I'm holding over here in my left hand. This oh. is the Monjaro pen. Okay. Th there's about 14 patented parts that go into this pen. And this pen, you know, you just basically dial in your dose, you hit the button, and you get the medication. It's really these pens that are the issue of the, sh the shortage. So when you get a compounded drug, you may be getting the active ingredient, but now you get a vial, you got to draw it up in a syringe yourself and inject yourself. And that's been one of the concerns. If you're not getting the exact right amount, you could be under or overdosing yourself with these medications. So, you know, as a general rule, buyer beware. 
But the, the, the reality is that these drugs are probably going to be in shortage for a couple more years even, Jake, talking to the manufacturers. So compounding pharmacies are going to continue to exist. And a lot of times the drugs are much cheaper, $1,000 a month for the prescription drug, more than that sometimes, $250 to $500 for the compounded version. But be careful. Make sure they get a certificate of analysis and uh, you do your due diligence. All right, Dr. Sanjay Gupta, always good to have you on. Thank you so much.